point. And we are now prompted to obviously make the necessary, necessary uh, adjustments. Um, my view is, given the sensitivity and complexity of the issue, I don't think anybody will suffer by adding more time to prepare uh, their cases and their study of the, uh, the matter. So um, I think that's probably all I need to say in terms of, of an introduction. You have got the resolution in front of you. Uh, if you'd like me to introduce it, yes, please. Excuse me, Chair. Um, while I agree that we need the best possible um, meeting with the best possible um, people from other representatives, thank you, from other committees, um, to give these two calls the best opportunity. Those are actually items four and five on the agenda, but we have got item three. Um, which is the procedure for considering the calling. And I see that the um, report is written out and it's an agenda item. I do have questions on that um, that I want to ask. Do I ask those after this? Uh, because if I don't want you then to finish the meeting, I've got a chance. It, it's my intention um, to discuss them at the opening of the meeting on the 27th as opposed to tonight. Well, I mean, the procedure of the calling. The, sorry, item three on the agenda. It's just that I do have a couple of questions on that, which I thought if everything's being put off to the end of the month, then perhaps this is the best time to mention it rather than at the meeting. Okay, yeah, ask the question by all means, but the procedure will be agreed, as I understand it, the, the procedure will be agreed on the night. Yes, yes, Jane, but it could be helpful. So it's a clarification point in relation to our general item number three, and that would be fulfilling uh, the committee to consider that. And obviously, the key issue is that not to, to discuss matters which are relevant to the calling, so it's just purely a procedural point then. And I think we'll address that. Or if not tonight, then I'll be able to come back to committee. Okay. Because it's both. Um, Let me make it quite clear, uh, in my role as chair of this committee, I will not allow the debate to stray into the, the, the wise and wherefores of the call-in. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, well, I mean, my whole objective of raising this is that I want to discuss the procedure and nothing else. Um, and when I read this here, for instance, the evidence from calling witnesses, it's listed one to five. Is, there a, is that the limit of the number of witnesses each party can have, or is that just the way it's been typed? My other question is, nothing in here covers if somebody can't make the meeting, can they send somebody to replace them? The other um, question I'd like to ask is, last time, if somebody couldn't make a meeting, the last calling, they were told that they could send a letter and there's quite a lot of controversy amongst the committee about that. This isn't covered here. This isn't anything to do with the two calling, but more to do with the last calling we had. And what I'm reading here is not the same procedure and not the same discussions and arguments that we had. Um, it was all a bit um, sort of ragged, the last one. So um, this sets it out how I understand it. Is it going to deviate from that by <coughs> witnesses sending letters in, or what, how is it going to work? Check if I may do. Um, this is intended to be a template, and, and uh, the number of witnesses are essentially determined by the, uh, the signatures uh, to the calling, uh, and then the limit on the number of uh, witnesses. What um, the chair of the committee will, however, do is consider the, uh, the evidence that the uh, witnesses are likely to give in very Narrative, narrative which, which is what's required to be provided as part of the information as to who's going to give witness evidence. The chair does have the discretion to uh, look at the, the witnesses and see whether or not they are going to be more likely to add value to the committee of the debate and the discussion in relation to the calling. Um, but there's no strict, no limit in terms of the number of witnesses that can be called. It's, it's, this is just purely a template to, to assist members in, in that regard. That's the point. The chair has the these submissions to the witnesses um, if they're written. Does it say that in the Constitution? I don't think it does. 
So that was just the point on the number of witnesses, live witnesses coming in to give evidence in person. Uh, with regards to the point you raised around the, the letters, yes, there was an issue around whether that could be submitted previously. There is um, nothing specific around that um, uh, as such. I think from previously, the, the advice was dependent on the nature of the information that was considered by the chair uh, to be of uh, such probative value. Then the chair would take a view on that. But if I think. Um, it's not, it's not a specific requirement or a provision which enables um, written submissions to the mayor because it's important that the committee has the opportunity to examine and indeed uh, consider the evidence that is provided and actually satisfy itself of the veracity of that to question who's needed. Yeah, but that, that, that's all very well, but there's no opportunity for the committee then to question that evidence. may be helpful that the contribution I'm about to make. The, this agenda, uh, item three, which we're not going to discuss by, or, or vote on, this was actually the agreed agenda from the first meeting of this coordinating committee that, that was agreed as, as the way forward. Uh, but can I make something quite clear? And, and given the um, issues around the postponements or adjournments of, of this meeting, it will be my intention to come to a decision on that one particular night, because I have no intention of bringing the, you know, the client group that have been involved in this situation out on a further night. So you have to allow some discretion. There will be, and, and that no doubt will be, you know, lots and lots of lobbying letters. Those in their own right can be absorbed by the members in their own time. I don't, I don't propose to read out every single lobbying letter. So there will have to be some discretion about which evidence is presented on the night, but I'm guessing, given you know, the, the extra time, there will be plenty of evidence that mem members of the public, and people who have a view on it, that will be presented to, uh, to committee members well in advance of the meeting, and that will help them come to a judgment rather than be presented on the night. We could end up literally presenting every piece of paper that's ever been printed on this matter, and that isn't the intention of it. Call a procedure, I don't think. So I, I, I will be, be moving progress in as much as we have a template to work from. Um, I'm encouraged, as I say, that the way scrutiny has gone, that we're not here to make political points or we're not here to, to, to bant with each other, but to ensure that all members of this scrutiny committee have enough information to make a valid judgment by the end of, of the evening. Um, I, 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 I don't disagree with what you said. My point is, and I don't think I've got it across very well, this isn't so much a template as it is the calling procedure. My point is, and I know evidence is produced on the night and people will say that they'll be able to say what they want. My point is, is if somebody has called as a witness and they can't make it, and so they put in a written submission, this is the whole argument, this is not in the Constitution, but last time it was allowed to happen. Somebody can't make it, they put in a submission, but we cannot then question them because it's written down and they're not here to answer. That's the point I'm making, not the um, what's submitted by um, the general public. I'm talking specifically about witnesses on the night. Now this is what this call-in procedure here in agenda item three is how I understand it the call-in to be. It doesn't cover if witnesses can't be here. How it used to be was that if a witness can't, I don't know whether witnesses can make it or not, but I just want to clarify this point because it, it seemed to be a cock up last time. But yeah. the, it was over the witnesses, yeah. it was. Uh, I, 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 is that your point? Yeah, I, I'm not, I, I have been, it has been explained to me what, how the phrase cock up was invented, but I, <laughs> I still don't think it's, I don't think it's the right sort of language to be using now. And if there were members of the public who are the client group at all about, can we refrain from those sort of comments, please? Chair, yeah. sure. uh, thank you. And I, I, I will certainly resist using any such language. Um, I do uh, just really, uh, in response to your opening remarks, 
Um, yes, we have got a new constitution, and yes, we will uh, inevitably get things wrong as we try to, to uh, implement the new constitution. I, I do feel, though, that if ever there is a, a, a group of people, a group of parents and a group of children that should be treated as well and as fairly as possible by um, this council, it has to be the children and parents of, of Lindale School. Um, and I, I, I would absolutely seek uh, an assurance that, um, that we won't have another, whatever the, the language that was just previously used, um, involving this, this particular um, not just the call-in, but the whole process, that it will be handled properly, um, and that we will check and double-check that we're doing things absolutely correctly, uh, and as they should be done, because, uh, as I say, if there is no um, other group that deserves to be treated well by this council, and it just does not reflect well on the council um, what has happened so far.
can present their case without being challenged. And I'm sure you would agree with that from a not legal perspective. And that's what I'm more concerned about. I agree that maybe it isn't in the Constitution. I'm not so concerned about that. I'm concerned about natural justice and that you shouldn't have a situation where a witness presents maybe a very emotive, very strong case in favour of what they're saying, but they can't be cross-examined upon it. That, to me, is totally wrong. I will ask Zadie. Chair, if it helps, the, the test you would look at in applying it in these circumstances is that uh, if it has, the evidence has probative value, then that's a, a valid consideration. However, it can't be to the prejudicial, can't have a prejudicial impact or an unfair impact on the proceedings or the to other parties within the, the, the proceedings. And so you will take the exercise of discretion in that regard, and you would, you would want to see and be satisfied that there is exceptional reasons as to why you should exercise your discretion in that way, because you believe the evidence uh, provides some probative value, but as I say, it should not be at the expense of other uh, unfairness or indeed be prejudiced to uh, the other party. I think the council is absolutely right that you, that's a balance that needs to be struck. But in some cases, if it is the case that's more prejudicial, uh, at least for fairness, then we would not allow it for those reasons. Um, I was going to talk about the three minutes. Um, they don't, written statements don't carry any weight in the public tribunal, so that's what I think about. Steve, are you going to be sharing this meeting on the 27th? Because the way you were talking before, you were saying I'm going to allow this, I'm not going to allow that. Just a clarification. To be sort about the nature of an agenda meeting. From my knowledge uh, of being uh, chair of many committees, an adjourned meeting must have the same membership when it be adjourned. So I'm presuming if I'm chair of this, uh, uh, I'll be chair of the next one. Right. Uh, what I don't want to happen really, uh, generally, because this, this, this is something that I am keen on, is that we don't tie up members of the public who are anxious and, and looking at a serious issue for them that we spend another half hour at the beginning of next meeting on procedural issues. I think we have clear guidance. I will discuss, and I'm happy to discuss with the spokesperson if, if that was necessary, of a late piece of, of written evidence, okay? And it would have to be extremely late to warrant that. If it's come, then the person who wants to present that evidence, it's no more than a lobbying letter, which we will all receive. So I make the distinction between lobbying and, and, and what is evidence. If it's for a witness who under very exceptional circumstances could not attend the meeting and at the last minute wants, desperately wanted to highlight a point, then I will take consultation with, with the surgeons and possibly the other, the other two folks and we we'll agree before we go into that. Because I really generally you know, don't, don't want to, to have this this, this rehearsal. And the point points have been well taken and it's been, been made and we, we, we'll understand what we need to do there. Okay, uh, I've got a resolution. Is there any other comments? Yes. Just a comment on the recommendation. Just some clarity on the uh, co-option of the uh, pair of representatives of the IOC authority. Is the wording accurate that if this means for educational matters only, or are they permanently committed to co-opted? I think it does say for educational matters only in the, in the body <coughs> of the other recommendations. Way it worded. So is it a better way of writing that? Yeah, I've got a kind of recommendation, but essentially it is purely in relation to educational matters where it's going to be uh, introduced in MIT. Okay, just take happy that we get. Okay, again, so. Thank you. For, for the ones I'm saying again, apologies for the situation that we find ourselves in. I don't think we've done ourselves any great credit, but we've not certainly done ourselves no massive disservice by getting the thing right, uh, ready for, for the next meeting. And I hope uh, the meeting is used for the purpose it is, uh, to make a very difficult uh, number of, of decisions. Um, I will formally move that as a, as a resolution of, of moving this meeting forward. Is there a second that has been seconded by uh, Councillor Glassman? Um, all those in favour, please show. Uh, that's unanimous in that case. Okay, so I'll see you all on the 27th where I guess there'll be far more people in the room. Okay, thank you.